All right, there we go. Uh, we are live. It's episode 92 of the AGs uh, podcast. Monday, chipper as a daisy, they say, on a Monday, a rainy Monday. Harry Mays, Jason Martinez. Um, let's get the, the the portion of the podcast out of the way right now, Harry, where you go. Ah, oh, geez. What do you yeah. think of this weather? <laughs> oh, it sucks. Uh, yeah, we're going to have rain for the next four days, I think. Like a deluge, too. Yeah, well, I mean, we apparently had a deluge last weekend, too, when I was down in Florida. So I missed all that. I think we got like three inches of rain over the course of those couple of days. So, um, yeah, it's unbelievable, man. It's like it's like we live like in uh, Seattle, the Pacific Northwest or like in London or something, you know, places yeah. where you typically know it always rains like it, 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 we've had a lot of rain. I mean, it's, I guess it's good that it wasn't snow because we could have been just belted oh. over the course of this past winter. In January, it rained a lot. I know I, I had to put a tarp out on my front steps because if we get like significant downpours for like sustained periods of time, like where we might get like an inch in a two hour span, like I flood, like I get water in my basement. basement. Yeah. I had to do that like three times in January alone. Yeah. And uh, you know, here we are in, in April when it typically is supposed to rain. So uh, April fool's day. And we're starting out. It's dark. It's dreary. I've been up since 5. AM and I still feel like it's 5. AM. Cause it's so fucking dark. Well, what, now, when you get up at 5. AM on a day like this, how do you just not go? You know what? I'm just going to resack out and get, no, some I can't, sleep. I you can't. Just can't sleep. I'm old. You know, I don't sleep in. Well, so am I, now, I can sleep not, as old as me. not, not Harry. I, I'm 52 now. Yeah. No young man anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be 59 in June. So <laughs> oh, man, that's check great. back with me. Yeah. I, yeah. Let, let's talk about age for a second because why? <laughs> well, because it's, it's a non factor in my opinion. I think really your answer is exactly why I want to talk. About. Why? <laughs> because like people are like, Oh, you're 52. Holy cow. You know, like, who gives? I don't care. Mm. I, I don't act 52. I don't feel 52. I don't even know what 52 yeah, should supposed to feel like. Well, that's you know? what I'm saying. Like, how do you know what that feels like? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't even know what it's supposed to feel like. Here's what I know is that when, you know, we were kids, 14, 15, and we saw a 52 year old or 59 year old, we thought they were old as shit. Right. But I think right. we are proving that that is not the case. Well, anymore. they looked older back then. They did. I, I mean, think. Well, I think people looked older back when I was a kid than they do now. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Are we just. I don't know. I guess we're because maybe we're uh, we're in better shape. I don't know. We're eating better. I, I have no idea. Yeah. You know. Well, I, I see like pictures of people like there's there's guys that I race with that I game with, and I had sent them the picture of you and I with Joel Embiid. Mm. Where you're standing there next to Embiid on the floor. Oh, this is at the practice facility a couple of years yeah. ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I and I'm there standing on a chair. Right. And he's still taller than me. Well, yeah. Um, and you know, I, I'd sent that on Saturday and I turned fifty two on Saturday. And people were like, You do not look fifty two years old. I go, What about the guy that's with me? And I don't mean Embiid, because <laughs> he's older than I am. And they said he looks like he's in his mid thirties. And I'm like, see, like I feel like I have some friends that look really fucking old. Yeah. Like I ran into a guy who played hockey with it at Wawa a couple weeks ago. I'm not going to say his name, but mm -hmm. he played hockey at a very high level, was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. Oh. I ran into him and I was like, I couldn't believe I did. I walked by him one time. And I think that's him. And then mm -hmm. I walked by again. I'm like, and I said his name and it was him. And Harry, I will tell you, he looked 20 years older than me. Really? Yeah. Now, why do you think that is? Well, he had a few he had a few rough years where he really beat up the body a little bit. Yeah, you know, I don't mean in sports, but oh. you've beaten yours up like crazy. Well, yeah, you know, I, I I had years of beating the shit out of mine too, but um, it doesn't seem to have like eight, it ages certain people in different ways. I think I don't know. I think it's hereditary. It's just like what what your genetic makeup is. Yeah, I think yeah. that's part of it too. Like, yeah, I have two older brothers that are five years older than me. They're twins. Mm -hmm. Um, they're fifty seven and. For their age, they look they look fine. Yeah. You know? It's I don't know. It's bizarre though. Um, but I, well, I don't like it. I don't like thinking that I'm gonna be 59. That's old to me. Well, you it, it has nothing to do with 59 for you. It's 60 for you that you're within a year. Oh, yeah. That okay. 
Yeah, a little inside psychology here on the program today mm. tells me the 59 is not the actual number that you're afraid of. Oh, you're afraid of 59 because it means you're one from 60. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Am I right about this, Harry? Yeah, yeah yes, you are correct. <laughs> Good diagnosis. Yeah. And what, what is this uh, T from the 203 saying too much Ozempic? I'm not on Ozempic. No, I don't. that's that weight loss thing. No, that he said people are using. using it. Yeah. That doesn't age people, though. Was, no. People are dropping weight like it's going out of style with that shit. Are they? Oh, my. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like it, real fatties, though. Like, you got to be really fat. No, but like a lot of people that aren't even, you know, like. Like Kelly obese. Clarkson fat. She used it. Yeah. Yeah. They said like, that she used the keto gummies that were on Shark Tank, but that was actually bullshit. spam. Yeah, yeah Mark bullshit. Cuban spoke to it on the uh, Lex Friedman podcast that he worked with Google on removing the fact that that would show up there uh, because those keto gummies do nothing. Yeah. So. Well, now there's there's stuff all over Instagram now where you don't even know if it's true. It's like a Joe Rogan is on his podcast talking about some product. Yeah, it's and AI half, bullshit. Yeah, half the time it's bullshit. Like he uh-huh. he never even spoke about it, but they. You know, they, that AI stuff can make it like deep fake stuff, I guess, is what it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the, and they can make it seem like that. Oh, that he's endorsing this product. And right. that's why he's ripped and jacked. Dangerous. And so successful. Yeah, it really is. Yep. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Then you got this AT&T hack that just happened. Are you an AT&T uh, customer? No, Harry? no I'm not, not either. They got hacked, apparently. They and like did? 93 million people's data is out there. They said on the news on the dark web. Mm. I've never seen the dark. Web, I've never been on the dark web. Hey, what's the address for the dark web? Can we go on it on the show? I have no idea, <laughs> but I've never been on it. I'm on the diet web, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What <laughs> and, are you doing? And frankly, it's kind of boring. The, the regular web at this point. You, um, you're on something now, right? Yeah. Where you're going um, to the bathroom every two hours. Well, I do that normally. Uh, no, I don't mean As that. You know. I don't mean number one. Yeah. I mean, number two. Yeah. <laughs> yes, number two <laughs> has been very prominent in the household because me wow. and the old lady are doing what uh, a body detox, Harry. He, the old lady's doing it too. Yeah, she is the women's version of it. Um, and what you do is you the first day at night you take four of these pills, mm-hmm. and then the next six days you take four in the morning and four at night. Oh my and god! It says it's a powerful, comfortable, easy, fast-acting, all-in-one formula, men's formula for the body detox that helps remove waste pounds, also aids in your kidney, stomach, prostate, blood, lungs, toxins, colon, liver, and skin. Mm. And let me tell you, it's having uh, effects. I don't know if it's doing anything good, but it's having an effect. Well, is this like FDA approved, or is this some thing you got from China? No, I got GNC. Oh, yeah? I recommended it. Yeah, I trust my guy. GNC is good. Yeah, it's good Mm. people. Yeah. GNC. Yeah, and, it, and I know that it's a good product because it was not nearly the most expensive one. Uh huh. But he recommended it. Okay. You you can always tell the guy if the guy always recommends. Oh, this one it's a uh, hundred and twenty eight bucks, and everything else is thirty bucks. You know mm-hmm. it's bullshit, right? Um, but this this was not nearly as expensive as some of the other uh, ones that were out there. And he said this is by far the best one. So yeah, and that Chad Everett to... says uh, if you want a body detox, drink a twelve pack of Schlitz. I, I've done that detox. That's a good before. point. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do the Bush detox. I, I was oh, a yeah? bigger fan of the, uh, the Bush detox. Not, not Budweiser. Bush. I love you. You're a Bushman. I'm a Bushman. <laughs> yes, you are. You've always been untamed and unfettered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah. Uh, but, but it's weird. Like, I feel really good. Like, I have yeah? a different kind of spite. The old lady's got it, too. It it hasn't done anything for libido, but um, I got a different kind of spike of energy and stuff, you know? Yeah. And, so and like you put on pants, you definitely feel d- different. Yeah. Well, I mean, then what happens when you stop this thing after four days and you start holding water back in your body? Then you're going to go back to looking normal. Well, th- no, this is not water. You're drinking eight to ten uh, ounce, ounces of water a day on this. This is flushing well, I normally solid do that. toxins. I normally drink eight to twelve. That's that, and hence why you look great at fifty nine. Yeah, you so hydrate. The hydrating, you know, very early in the morning. Yeah, because oftentimes you're hydrating in the evening in a different fashion. Yes, yes, <laughs> with a very heavy pour. Yeah, um. <laughs> a few empty bottles of vodka in your uh, 
in your uh, recycling, in the recycling bin. bin. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I brought it out. And I was like, Jesus Christ! It's all glass. You don't get plastic. <laughs> yeah, I, it's I, I all get the glass. Plastic. Yeah, you get, I get the, the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh man. So uh, with sports, we had uh, baseball opening day. Did we postponed from Thursday to Friday? I got home on Thursday. And they had already called it off. Um, and did probably, John Belaris call it off, Harry? No, I don't. Does he I still know he wanted weather? to. I thought he, he was doing he, real estate or something. He had put out a tweet, I think, on Tuesday and said the Phillies should move opening day to Friday now. Let mm. people plan. And he broke down the reasons why. John and they Belaris did. did on, and, and I don't know if they listened to him, but um, they ended up making the call a little bit later than Belaris did. But mm. I, look, I, I agree with John on this. If you can make the call earlier, there's a lot of planning that goes into opening day, going down there and yeah. the work and you the whole thing. All the pregame festivities. Yeah. Yeah. So um, good on them. Game yeah, well, well but... No, I mean, and the weather was awful, too. I played yeah. golf on Friday. Man, I've never played golf in winds like that. It was like 25 to 30 mile an hour sustained winds. Like it was it was unbelievable. Like it was it not. Like it was never behind you or two. Right. It, right. It's always in your <laughs> in your in your grill. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, like, like had I known it was going to be that bad, I would have, I would have bailed. Yeah. That, I mean, and it takes a lot for you to bail. I couldn't imagine sitting down at citizens bank park in that in the late afternoon. Damn. Oh, just get really pelted. windy. And then, you know, and then they, they stink. As soon as Wheeler comes out of the game, they're up to nothing. And, yep. uh, the bullpen gives it right back two two. And then before you looked up, it was nine to two. Yeah. Uh, and they, they got belted. Uh, in the later innings of that game. And then the next day, you're thinking Nola's going to come out there with a big uh, performance, and he gets shelled. He got rocked for seven earned runs in the first, what, three, four innings of the game. Yeah. They get yeah. pounded, but they get a win yesterday. Uh, so they got Series one. Series salvager, that was. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to get swept by your your rival, division rival, but they, they salvaged one game. So now I guess they got the Reds coming in for a couple. But we're going to have Larry Bo on next Friday, talk a little baseball. This Friday. Or this Friday, yeah. This yeah. Friday, yeah. yeah. I, I, it, you know Larry Boa is um, is top tier on this podcast. We both think the world oh, of Larry yeah. Boa. One of my favorite individuals. Yeah, Period. and not even just to talk baseball, just anything. Yeah. Like, I love Larry Boa. And I cannot mm -hmm. – when I text you, we should get Boa, and you text me back in five – when? And then five minutes later, he was confirmed. Correct. <laughs> and I Didn't love that. It take long. Yeah. No, it doesn't. That bows right to the point. Right. No, no bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Colin says, uh, the fragility of baseball fans is incredible. 0-2 is the end of the world, and yesterday meant they're all the way back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People were like, is to Sunday a must win? 6-1-0. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 160 yeah. games left. People feel the same way about the baseball season as they do like a football week. You know, yeah. you're like, if you lose one game in the NFL, it's like, you know, you're heading for the – for the bridges, right? Yeah. One game in baseball is is less than a tenth yeah. of uh, of a game in football. Yeah. So. We got 159 to go. Yeah, like right. let's settle down here. Yeah, uh, but people freak it out because you know Nola signs the contract and mm -hmm. uh, they were and Wheeler, around. but he was great. Yeah, least. yeah. Wow, Wheeler's absolute stud. Um, but uh, I mean, do you get into baseball right out of the gate? No. No, it takes you a no. while to work your way in. Well, yeah, it, just because it just doesn't feel like baseball. No, like it's cold. Is it June when you can start getting in? I am very bothered by the weather, as you can tell. Yeah, it does. It has a lot. I was of in Florida for a week. Okay, coming back here was like uh, it was like putting me in a freezer. Yeah, yeah. See, see, that's the problem. That's what you did. Yeah. If you stay here, fifty-eight feels good. No, it if doesn't. you leave and go to eighty, fifty-eight no. feels like the Arctic Circle. <laughs> <laughs> it's all 58, relative i'd sign for 58 right now with no wind yeah the problem what? is it's 58 and it feels like it's 42 it it does also feel like it's been windy non-stop for about two yeah. weeks it's been bananas which is normal it either gets really windy early in march or late in march and now i think we're getting more more or less in the in the late march period but yeah you know, these march and april months are you know it's a crapshoot yeah it, it's, as far as the weather they're transitional months, but they're yeah. usually a lot Seems of Seems to last forever. And then all of a sudden, it's 90 and stinking hot and real humid. It's yeah, like there's no real, like, yeah. period of, you know, 
65, 75. You know what I mean? Like, that's where I like it. It's not that gradual. Like, in the fall, I feel like it is more gradual. Yeah, the fall's the best. Yeah. Yeah. It's more gradual to winter. Yeah. Um, did, are you watching the tournament? The yeah, Final I watched, four set I watched a lot this weekend. I didn't watch a lot the first weekend because I was at my mom's, and she doesn't have the greatest television set up. In fact, it's so bad that I'm buying her a new TV this week, and I'm having it delivered. And I'm actually going to get her a YouTube TV subscription because she doesn't get squat, uh, and I can't handle it. Well, if you're going to do that, use the, use a you can like give her a code that gives you money off your subscription for the referral. Yeah, well, I got to get mine first, and I have a lot of questions still about it. Like it, it seems like it's a really tough thing for me to do is cut the cord. It, Harry, it is not tough. It's you're not- complicating it for no reason. Okay. Just cut the freaking thing. Well, right, like Mikey Miss said. <laughs> what, was, what was that in reference to? Yeah, cut the er, freaking thing. I remember. I Eric Lindros was in the studio and his headset got all tangled up. And Coach Camille, I think, was trying to untangle it. Oh, jeez. And they're on the air. And he's like, geez, just cut the freaking thing already. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it was, was it was wrapped up in the in the armrest of the studio. Chair. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, here here's the thing. All right, because uh, I'm gonna get you know there's like seventy some odd channels or whatever, seventy some dollars a month. It's very affordable. We're spending a shitload of money on like four different cable boxes throughout the house. It's it's a it's a mess. You get five, you get five units with their standard YouTube TV. Five TVs can be on at the same time. Okay, well that, that yeah that covers us. We got four. Yep. Um, but how like, many? how do you hook up your TV? Like, does the cable stay in there from the wall? No, it goes through Wi-Fi. It's on a smart TV. And okay. You, what kind? If you have a Roku TV, you just get the YouTube app, or you no, just, I don't have Roku. Or you can just put the YouTube app on your television. YouTube. TV. I have that. Okay, then yeah, just sign into your regular YouTube account. Mm-hmm. on the youtube tv account and just on your tv just subscribe okay well what about and hook up your tv to your home wi-fi i have two other tvs that aren't necessarily they're 40 inches and they, they don't have the same capabilities that my two big ones do all right then maybe you go out and you get a 20 dollar roku for those What's a twenty dollar Roku? What the fuck is it's that? It's just a remote and a and a little transponder you plug into your TV, and like a Fire Stick. Yeah, is it kind of like that? Yeah, because I have Roku one of those. Supports YouTube. I have one of those for one of the big TVs. Yeah, but you need a Roku one because that, that supports YouTube. I don't know if the Fire Stick does because that's at Amazon. See, product. these are part of the questions I got. Yeah, like yeah. this is. I don't think this is going to be as seamless and easy as people make it seem. Is it's, my point. I had zero problems. You had zero problems. Zero. Then why don't you come over and help me do this? Am I doing this during the flyer season or after? During. <laughs> In other words, you want it this week. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, we'll figure out a time. Flyers have three days off this week. So we'll Where do I get? Like, So you're suggesting I got to get let, two I, Rokus? Well, let, let me go to your house first before you start buying shit. Yeah. And let me let me see what your needs are. Oh, but I'll bring one of my Rokus to but show you. But now do you, you see what I'm saying? It's not that easy where you just call up Comcast and say, hey, cut my cable, keep my internet, and boom, I got the YouTube. It's not that easy. You, you have to you have to do something. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't just like, hey, I want it, and now it's there. Like, you, there are steps you have to take. What do you think this is? Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I got a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just check. YouTube TV is on Fire Stick. I thought oh, yeah. it was. Okay. Well, then then you don't need the thing. Well, no, I do for the other two. Like, he don't said, I need a stick in every TV? No. You don't? No. You're going to you're gonna stream right through your TV. Your TV is a computer. You're just going to stream through the TV. I got Sony Bravia 4K TVs. You'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be streaming like a madman. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Joey B goes, Mert equals the geek squad for yeah, Harry. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, it's geez. the best buy geek squad. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm ordering one for my mom and uh, the 55 inch, I guess it's a Samsung. Perfect. She, yeah, the she's Samsung. got enough room for a 55 yep. in this thing. And I, I, I go down there and I can't watch the golf channel. I can't watch like cable. No, it's just, I'm like, how do you live like this? 
I will tell you, Harry, one problem with, and you're going to have a problem here with YouTube TV, Uh-oh. is they do not have NHL Network television. Who, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> who cares? You're not going to get your Jackie Redman, Phil. Harry. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> the amount of time I've watched the NH- NHL Network, like two seconds worth. Come on. Seriously. <laughs> you're you're going to have your what next TV NBA TV isn't available because yeah. I don't watch NBA TV either. I don't watch any. I don't watch maybe NFL Network. A little NFL bit. Network I watch. But I'm not watching. Yeah. NBA. I even watch MLB. the MLB Network sometimes. Yeah. Depending on what's on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I've missed my Jackie Redmond Phil hair. Yeah. And Jamie no. Hirsch. And T from the 203. No, I don't need you to help my mom set up. You stay in Miami. It's a couple hours from my mom. You stay right there, right where you are. Yeah, we, we are not giving you Harry's mother's address. No. Get that out of your head. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll get you set up, though. We'll get we'll get you in. We'll yeah, see we'll, we'll get, get you in. And then you'll get a credit, see? Because I know you sent, you know, I want you to get credit for it. Yeah, I'll send you a code. Absolutely. I'll use my code when I set you up. Um, yeah, a little, a little but speaking back. of the Flyers now, boy, are oh, we? boy, they stink. <laughs> They're not tied. 82 points, same as the Capitals, but the Caps have two games in hand. And they're two points ahead of Detroit, who's got one game in hand on the Flyers. Seven games left. They've lost four in a row, including to those mutts, the Canadians and the Blackhawks of all teams, who stink. And then they get this Russian goaltender, which postponed our podcast last week. This Fedotov dude. What's the story here? What's the story? I, I didn't. Uh, look, I'll be fully transparent here um, for a change. Uh, I had heard from somebody that the Fedotov thing was still in the mix mm. about three weeks earlier. And I was I was blown away. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I thought that ship had sailed. You know, now, when you when say the, in the mix, you mean about getting him over to the country, right? Yeah, getting him. And out of the KHL or whatever the, the league yeah, is. Cause he had, there, right? Because he had another year. Okay. On his contract, and he signed a two-year contract when the double IHF, the International Hockey Federation, ruled that the Flyers' contract was valid. They didn't give a shit. They mm-hmm. he signed. They made him sign a contract over there, um, and he did. So okay. he played this year, and I figured he was going to play next year. And it was like, okay, now he's getting 28, 29 years old. It's just never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Flyers, they did a thing they called it. They told his contract it was valid, but they told it so it didn't click off and it, and this year they suspended the contract so they still had it but it wasn't being used because he was not available to come over hmm. and then all of a sudden news breaks that Siaska let him out of his contract in Moscow and wished him best luck in his future endeavors and a day and a half later he's here at a press conference wow with Danny and it was it was like holy shit this happened really quick and under the radar this this Briere's got an extraction team in Russia because he got Kolosov over here too, who's now mm-hmm. with the Phantoms, the other goalie. But this kid, this Ivan Fedotov, um, is it Fedotov he, or Fedota? How do you pronounce it? Fedotov. Yeah, Fedotov. I, we were calling him Fedotov forever, but in Russian, the middle syllable is the big one, apparently. Oh, so it is Fedotov. And I, I had a chance to meet him after the press conference, and he's a giant. He's like six eight. He, yeah, he's six huge. seven. Yeah. I, I, I'm like, dude, how can, first of all, like, what's the equipment look like this guy puts on? Right. He was enormous. One of the pillows is as long as you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I stood next to one of his pillows at the game the other day, Harry, and it came up north of my belly button. You could have slept on it. <laughs> yeah, it was like a love seat. <laughs> for me. Oh. It was huge. I'm like, <laughs> and the paddle of his stick is like, yeah. like I use a 25 inch paddle. From okay. the heel of the stick yeah, to the, the, where, yeah, the pow. The, yeah. I think his is 29. Kind of like the blade. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. From, yeah, like the, the thick part that comes up. And I was, it's it's mind-numbing how big – the Flyers put a picture of him out at practice, standing in front of the net. He's, like, standing like this. And I'm and it looks like it's Photoshopped, and the net looks like one of those little kid nets. You get your four-year-old with a plastic Mylac. Is he any good? He was he had some really good years over there and, and was good in the Olympics, kind of a late bloomer. He was a seventh round draft pick of the Flyers, I think in 2015. Um, but it was a late bloomer 
Mm-hmm. And this year, he, he had a bit of a rough start because he was had the year of military service. He didn't play. He was in the Arctic Circle, and then they moved him onto a, a Navy ship the in the Russian Circle. military. Jeez. They literally sent him to Siberia. He's like banished to Siberia. Yeah. I mean, it's like a Hollywood movie. So th- that was the other part that was weird. Like when you're sitting there across from him at the practice facility, it was like, man, this is like, it- it's surreal mm. that he's actually here because he, because you know everything he went through. So will he play Otto tonight against the Islanders? Yeah, I don't think he's playing tonight. He's I would have played him tonight. I would have played him. What sweater number is he? 82. He 80. wore 28 over there, but we know nobody's going to wear 28 here again. No. Because of the L cap. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, eighty two. I would have played them tonight because the team looks they look gassed. They are yeah. I mean they have fifteen days, fifteen games in thirty days in March. They got the Islanders tonight who are still in the on the periphery of the playoffs, and then they got a four game road trip, and then they finished with two straight at home with I think the Devils and the Capitals. And we've been talking about that Capitals game for a while because it, it could come down to that. Who knows? Yes. And the Caps will be on a back to back and the Flyers will be on two days rest in between, which is right. So yeah, um, and Washington has a tougher schedule down here, the final stretch. They got Carolina on the road, Detroit on the road, Tampa Bay, Boston at home, and then, of course, they come to Philly for the uh, uh, the end of the season, the last game. Detroit also has Tampa Bay on the road. They got the Rangers. They got at Toronto. But then they finish with Montreal at Montreal. Yeah. So, you know, look, I I, I didn't think Washington was going to stay in it. Somehow they have. Um it's going to come down to that 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 Washington game on the 16th. I it's just yeah. going to. And we'll it? see like the Flyers got to find a way to get a win tonight and then they have the couple days rest which they need dearly. Yeah. And then kind of recoil for that final 6 games of the season back to back Friday Saturday with uh um Buff- Buffalo and Columbus. So Flyers have the easiest strength of remaining schedule of the teams, yeah. but they haven't been good against bad teams. They've been no, good against like- good teams like the case with Montreal and Chicago just the other couple of days. So, uh, yeah, yeah, they got to get back to it here. Cause I, I was sort of penciling them in as a, a definite playoff team. Yeah. Now they're a wild card. Yeah. Right now, so. which, yeah. Which, I mean, it doesn't really matter if, if you're wild card or a three seed, you're going to start on the road. So either you're going to get Carolina, the Rangers or Boston probably, or, mm. or maybe, maybe Florida. Those are the four teams you could play in a first round. So you advantage to all those teams in those situations anyway. Okay. But people were after the loss on Saturday, they're all, ah, this team doesn't deserve to make the playoffs. I don't even want them to make the play. Like, that's the dumbest hot take in the world. Yeah. You make the playoffs based on an 82 game season. Yeah. You're going to lose to some shit teams along the way. Does it, is it good that they lost to Montreal and Chicago? Fuck no. no. No, of course not. No, <laughs> but it's based on 82 games. Yeah. These people that go, well, I don't even want them to make it now. There's still a ton to be gained by making it. Even if you go in there and you lose in five. Yeah. There's still well, still well, a right. ton to be in. Plus, like if, if they just miss out, their chances in the lottery are n- nothing. They're like, not even in it because yeah. it's top 12. Oh, it's top 12. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So then what's the point? Like just yeah. get to the playoffs and get, gain some experience and maybe you upset somebody. Who knows? Yeah, and then um, people are still like, oh, this is exactly what Tord studs. He gets a team on the periphery of the playoffs and doesn't make it. You don't get a high – look, teams that get the high pick haven't done much. Like mm-hmm. that That's not this automatic ticket out of purgatory. They have right. two first-round picks last year. One of them is Michkov, who's yeah. a bona fide star, superstar that's coming. And you where's he? He, he's, uh, he played in Sochi this year. He got lent there, um, and he's got two more years in his contract. But – the way Danny's been pulling guys out of Russia, I wouldn't be surprised if he comes earlier. Hmm. All right. So, clearly, he knows how to untangle. Like, dealing with getting a player out of Russia is like dealing with, like, you open up a, a box of all your cords, mm-hmm. your computer cords. It's like untangling those. It's a pain in the ass. Right. And it takes a while, and it's difficult, and it's complicated. It's like Coach Camille trying to set up Eric Lindros's headphones. Yeah. You, yeah. you untangle one, and then you think you got it figured out, and you, you realize that one's tangled somewhere else. Right. And But right. some people are able to do that well. And right. he, it, Danny's been able to do those kind of things very well and patiently, which doesn't get you one step forward and three steps back which is right. the, is what he's done. So he's been very good at that and he's going to need to be good at it maybe with Michkov as well. So mm-hmm. um yeah. but it w- getting these two guys over the way he has very quietly too and clandestine uh portends well for any entanglements he may face with Michkov. Okay. 
Now the Sixers. Who? The Sixers. Oh. Tomorrow yeah, night. He should have had this goalie play for them. I know. He's six seven, six eight. He probably hit a couple of baskets in the paint. Uh I think Embiid's coming back tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I there's been a lot of speculation. This about was one player. of the games that I looked at. Remember when he got injured, yeah. I looked ahead in the schedule mm-hmm. and I say that they needed at least seven games to get him kind of ready. Well, this is the, this is seventh game. Oklahoma City at home. I think it's a perfect spot. He's been with the team, traveling with them, and they've been in the ramp up period, as they yeah. call it. Getting him uh, ready. Getting him ready, working him a little bit harder, probably each day in practice and so forth. But man, do they need him? Two and five in their last seven. Uh, they got seven games left, and they're two games back of the Pacers for the sixth seed. Yeah. Right now, they're in the play in situation. <sighs> them in Miami and. What I guess Chicago. They have no. There's no Atlanta. fear of them really falling any further back. But uh, it'd be nice to get into that top six. I don't know if that's going to happen. But yeah. Uh, so if they were in the play, and now they'd get Chicago, correct? I'm not sure how it works. I think Miami would get Atlanta, and the Sixers would get Chicago in the play. And okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> what's he going to be when he comes back? Is it, I don't is know. Going to be a sustainable player. Like he's a great player when he's healthy. There's no question about that. Yeah, so, one of the most dominant players, it not only in today's game but in the history of the game. Mm-hmm. But the the pro- that's not the problem. <laughs> yeah, know, the problem is just can he stay on the floor? Uh, they beat the what the Raptors the other night without uh, Maxi didn't play in that game, but they they got good games out of the the backup guards and Tobias Harris actually showed up. I guess they beat the Clippers a couple. of couple of days ago over in LA that was their only win on that four game road trip out west and that was the first time I think that they faced Harden since he was moved and Harden walked out without talking to the media apparently yeah is that right yeah uh, it's James Harden I'll tell you what a mutt There's a lot of mutts in that league and he's one of them but that gets paid a lot of dough he gets paid a lot of money Yes, unbelievable. Sir. But right? yeah, I've, I've been dialed out on the Sixers, man, because you know, without Embiid, they got no chance. So I'm like, why am I investing my time? You know, I'll going nowhere. Peek, I'll peek in at it here and there, but I'm, you know, Tuesday night if he plays, I'm going to watch the game. Yeah, yeah. There, there's intrigue there to see how he plays. Yeah, how long he plays, what how he looks like. Minutes. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Because I mean, let's face it, though, that that team's not going on any sort of run. Not, not with well, not without, without him. him. Yeah, not without him. I don't think with him. Well, I'm, I'm probably not. Yeah, that's yeah, unfortunate. But, but uh, that process, I'll tell you, was a was a godsend. I know I get in trouble anytime I criticize him. You know, or oh yeah, they, yeah, you know, uh, not for one puts out the clip and then God Harry forbid. Is, yeah, uh, Harry ends up on all the message boards. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm public enemy number one. Bad takes. Uh, yeah, bad takes exposed. Bad takes where, incorporated. Yeah. They have a Harry channel now. They right? do? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and then the other thing that happened while I was away is Hassan Reddick got traded to the New York Jets. All that, yeah. How about that? Yeah. Now, it's good for him because he's still remotely close to home, grew up in South Jersey. Uh, but, man, you know, they're, they're touting this Bryce Huff guy. And a buddy of mine, or a guy down in Florida, was like, yeah, with well, the, the Eagles uh, – they brought in this guy from the Jets. They're talking up. I, was, I said they're talking him up because he's young, yeah. and he's he's younger and probably a little cheaper. Now he's three years, fifty one million. They Not had given good. Hassan three years, I think forty five million, but he's four years older. Yeah, and the you know the mantra is always younger is better. Yeah, and yeah. you know we'll see because now it's sack yeah. watch. Yeah, you know we're gonna we're gonna be comparing and contrasting Mr. Huff. And Mr. Reddick over the next over this season, and the yeah. Jets have a pretty good defense. Like their quarterback situation's a mess. You know, I guess Rodgers will come back, but uh, their defense is pretty good. So he could put up numbers up there. Yeah, I, but like you have this guy, and he was great for a period of time, and then not, boom, he's just out of here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. I, yeah, well, we'll see. It, T says Bryce Huff sounds like a tool, not Josh Huff. Josh Huff, that was the wide receiver with yeah. Chip Kelly, right? That yeah, went exactly. across the bridge with the gun going 100 miles an hour, right? Yeah, yeah. Over, to, over to Walt. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah, they oh, were man. days. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to the draft. I need a little football. 
So when is the draft? The end of the month. Okay, Towards so it's like the April. last weekend of April, like the 29th ish. Uh, let me see. Is you around there? Let me get. Let me pull up because we got the Masters next week. That's exactly where I was next going. Week next week is week. Masters yeah. week. I think the draft is probably the 25th. That Thursday night is probably round one. The 26th will be rounds two and three. And okay. then Saturday, the 27th is probably the last day of it. Okay. That's my guess. All right. T from the 203, he'll, he'll correct us. Joey B will know. They all know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, here's the deal. You have the Masters before everything. So mm-hmm. the Masters doesn't start this Thursday. It's the following no, it's next Thursday. Thursday. This Thursday, they're in San Antonio. Okay. It was a good field for that tournament. Yeah. yeah. Who are you liking for the Masters, Harry? You liking Xander Shoffley for the Masters? It's hard not to like Scotty Scheffler right now. Yeah, he's a, on a heater, huh? Yeah, well, he, he finally lost. He finally didn't win this past weekend. Um, and he actually had his first round. Uh, he had 28 straight rounds under par, mm-hmm. which I think was a record. Tiger Woods holds the par or better streak, I believe, at 52 straight rounds. But mm-hmm. Scotty Scheffler kept his intact par. But he shot par, I think, on on Saturday. Okay. Friday or Saturday. I got two but, guys um, to look out for. I can't lay. I like in the Masters. Yeah, yeah, and I like uh, Zalatoris. Oh, you know he's not playing well, right? The last two two uh, starts, not very good. Yeah, he, didn't he have back surgery or something? Well, yeah, why, last year. Last year, but yeah, he had, he'd come back and he was like in the top ten in a couple of tournaments, and then you're thinking, well, he's going to knock down a win. Well, the last two week, the last two times he's gone out, uh, I think he just barely made the cut in this past week. Um, so he needs to he needs to get sharp. Yeah. What about so. Rory? No, no, never. You don't like him at that at that at that club on that track, Harry. No, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I hope he never wins a Masters. <laughs> the, the the Rory McElroy hate is still yes. strong. Yeah, it's somebody's got to do it. Might as well be me. Yeah, Joey B with the with the deets. You okay. are correct. Yeah, the, the draft. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There he goes. Yeah. Joey B said he was trying to watch the EF1 race this past weekend. Why? What is that? Formula E. It's uh, it's like is that the, like Bobo F1? Yeah, it's the environmentally conscious Formula One, which I do not watch. What? Yeah. What? What is it? Electric cars? Yeah. Yeah. They, really? They, they run yeah on electric. It's like a whole like the Tesla series. I think you'd call it. <laughs> well, what? What are the the cars like? What? They look like Formula One cars. They're slightly different. Oh yeah, they're behaved uh, vastly different, obviously, because hmm. Formula One Formula One cars right now are called turbo hybrids. It's an engine with uh, an electrical boost system called ERS, hmm. uh, which provides an extra 180 horsepower. Oh wow! So, but yeah, they're in Japan this week at Suzuka, one of the great tracks in the world for uh, Formula One. And they'll be there this weekend. Usually they're there very late in the year, but it's usually the rainy season when they're there. Mm. And the races, like last year's race was cut short because it was just deluge. Just too much water on the track. Yeah. And I mean, look, there's been tragedy there too. Uh, A guy went off there, uh, I think in 2014, and they brought one of the safety cranes to pick his car up onto the track. And this guy went into the safety crane, was then in a coma for years, and then died um, as a result of that. What do you mean so, he went into the safety crane? It, there was so much rain, and he went off the track and and ran into the crane. Oh, not, okay. Not a padded barrier. Oh, all right. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, it's been it, – it's a track that's very um, very dangerous when it's that wet, and there's like mm. tons of turns, and it's just – it's wild. Well, can't you just bail? Like if you're a rider, you're saying that's too wet. I don't want to. I don't want to ride. I don't want to drive. Not these guys. They love driving no? on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they love that. It, the guy's name was. He, he was in the Formula One Acad- or in uh, Ferrari's Academy. It was Jules Bianchi. Was the guy that died. So. Mm, nice Italian name. Yeah. So, Bianchi. Bianchi. I think. I think it's a, a a racing bicycle named Bianchi. Yes, there is a brand yeah. Bianchi. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. so um, yeah, that happened at the. Uh, I think it was yeah, 2014 is when wow. he had the accident. So, yeah. well, um, yeah, I've been watching the tournament though, man. I'll tell you, thank God for NC State and this this DJ Burns kid 
because other than that, like I hate Purdue and I can't stand this Zach Eady, this seven foot four dude. Mm-hmm. Um, UConn is UConn. They just keep rolling on. Danny Hurley's a stud for a coach. They could get their sixth national championship as a program. Um, which is unbelievable. You think about what they've done at that school in stores, Connecticut for women's basketball and men's college basketball. Crazy. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, and a, it's a place where most people couldn't even find on a map. No, it's like Northeast of Hartford. Yeah. You know, and it's, which is not a destination. No, it really isn't. But mm-hmm. um, they're, they're unbelievable. And then you got Alabama in there. Who's really entertaining to watch. I watched that Alabama, North Carolina game was probably the best game thus far in the tournament, at least the ones that I've seen. Yeah. Um, Alabama's a lot of fun to watch. They get this, uh, this – the point guard's really good. And then they got this big kid, six foot ten, white dude, that started at North Dakota State, and he's got one of these, like, killbilly redneck mustaches. Oh, nice. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. And he nah. went off in the second half on offensive end and the defensive end against North Carolina, just took over the fucking game. He's wow. hitting threes. He's hitting foul shots. He's hitting dunks. He's blocking shots at the other end. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And, and single-handedly lifted that team past North Carolina, who were favored in the game. That was awesome. And then yesterday, watching North Carolina State defeat Duke was really cool. Yeah. This this chunky freaking DJ Burns, he's like 6'9", 280. You know, wow. he's like a thick freaking – Dude like with a big smile trailer. on his face. He's got a smile from ear to ear, man. The kid loves playing. He's got a bunch of endorsement deals. He is living large right now, and he he he's really good. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he's going to be an NBA player. It doesn't matter to me because in college, like for this time period, he, he is get away really with. good and yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. Is and, Gene uh, Cady still uh, coaching he's Purdue? Still <laughs> he's still alive. Is he really? Yeah, he's still alive. He's in, he's in attendance at the wow. Purdue games. I mean, he's he's up there, and he's he's in his eighties, I'm sure. Um, oh my goodness! I've but yeah, been coach forever. Yeah, but now this other coach finally made the Final Four. Pa- Matt Painter yep. was under a lot of uh, scru- scrutiny because they've had really good teams that have been one and two and three seeds that have disappointed. He finally made the Final Four. First time they've been to the Final Four since 1980, when wow. Joe Barry Carroll led the Purdue Boiler Mix. He was a center, wow. and. Uh, to let them into the final four that year. NC State, it's their first final four since 1983 when Jim Valvano won yeah. the damn thing. But he stormed they, the court, Right. They yeah. came in as like a 10 or an 11 seed then, I think. Wow. And yeah, and they, I think the only reason they, they went to the tournament that year is the same as this year. They had to win the ACC conference tournament. To get in. To get in. Wow. And went all the way and won it. And this year they won five games in five days in the ACC tournament. Got into the to the dance, which guaranteed the coach two year extension. They were going to fire him. Wow. If, it, if he didn't get in and they were on their way to, to like being like 18 and 15 or whatever and yeah, not mediocre. get in the tournament, he'd yeah. have gotten whacked probably. Now he's got a two year extension. His team is the darling of the whole tournament. And it's probably just kickstarted their whole recruiting and NI, you know, NIL yeah. donations and everything. It's amazing yeah, what, what, what can happen. Say. Yeah, you go on one run and it can sustain you for the next eight to ten years. Good, you know, <laughs> yeah, it really can. It just this, sets you this, up, yeah, for can, success. And, and now um, all of a sudden, the coach has a ton of cachet. Yeah, yeah, you know. transfers want to come there now. Yeah. Probably, you know, what I mean, yep. this, this group story. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Good so they, they've they've rescued the tournament in my eyes as NC State. That's great because there there weren't a lot of upsets in the first weekend, except Kentucky lost, which really kind of pissed me off because I thought. They had a team that was good enough to win it, and then they were bad enough to lose in the first freaking round yeah. to Oakland. Yeah. So yeah, Oakland's not one of those, uh, you know, hallmark programs. No, no. Jeez, <laughs> they, 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 you couldn't. Where is Oakland University? Tell me. Uh, not in Oakland, California. No. Is it in? Uh, where's the other Oakland? I don't even know. Suburban Detroit, I believe. Wow. It's like on the suburbs of Detroit, Oakland, Michigan, I think so, is where it is. Well, Eminem be in, in attendance, Harry, with an Oakland sweatshirt on? Well, they ended up losing to NC State the next round. An outrage. Yeah, NC State beat them, and then they beat Marquette, I believe. Um, you know, so it's 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 been fun. This past weekend was was pretty good. Some good right. games. Let's tell so. the people about another fun place called the Fudge Kitchen as we get closer to shore time. Yeah, and hopefully you got your uh your Easter basket filled with uh, some of the goodies at the original fudge kitchen the official sponsor of not for long media and the ig's podcast 
a staple of the Jersey Shore, six locations, Cape May, Wildwood, Stone Harbor, and Ocean City. They make all their fudge right in the store, which guarantees a delicious product. Stop by and let them know that we sent you. But if you're not able to go, no problem. Go to their website, fudgekitchens.com. They'll ship it right to you. Yep. And so in the meantime, you get this, you get it shipped to you. And in due time, very soon, you'll be down there walking the boards and be able to get your fudge kitchen right from the shop, which is right. beautiful. Yeah. Oh, Yale beat Auburn too. That was an, that was another upset. Okay. Yeah. The Ivy league team beat Auburn. How about that? Yeah. Mm. yeah. So uh, uh, Oakland University is in Pontiac, Michigan says Joey B. That's where uh, they used to have the silver dome. Yeah. The old silver the dome was there. Yeah. yeah. Pontiac. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. So we'll be back Friday, Harry. We got uh, Larry Boa coming Friday. Yeah. We'll do 11 a.m. Friday morning and uh, we'll get ready for uh, we'll get some great baseball talk, some golf talk with with Larry as well. Yeah. He had a hole in one recently. We'll talk about that. Saw too. that. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, and let's get some reviews and stuff for next week or for Friday. We'll do that. All I, right. I, I can couple those together. Call, as they say uh, in radio, part, we can call those together. Oh, OK. Call. C U L L. Okay. Oh, yes. C U L L. Great. Good job on the spelling, Harry. Yeah. All right. Good. Everybody have a great week. Hope survive this weather. Get the R. WrestleMania out. this week. Is that right? Are you going? Where is it? It's at the link. No, I'm out. Is what Lincoln day is that? that it's, fr- it's Saturday, Sunday, I think, or Friday, Saturday. Oh. It's, it's, I think it's two days. Yeah. The flyers are on the road, so I don't have to deal with that traffic. Yeah. The nightmare getting in there with that Phillies opening day or Phillies game Saturday. And mm-hmm. there was a Wings game. Oh, like, yeah. Getting to the barn on Saturday. Pain in the ass. Yeah. That stinks. Yeah. I, I looked at the, uh, the matches. I don't recognize any of the participants anymore. Ah, yeah, I'm think, so out of it. I think we have a guy coming on tonight at one of the intermissions, Ricochet. That we oh, have yeah? to do an interview with to promote the event. Not Rick O'Shea. No. Oh. <laughs> no. Not the Irish Rick. <laughs> uh, oh. So we'll be back Friday. Everybody have a great week. We'll All talk right. to you Friday on a brand new Ah Geez podcast. Beautiful.